Welcome to Mission Majima. Ajahn. Ajahn. So tell us about Majima Nikaya 7, the Vata Sutta. Yep. So the Vata Sutta, the simile of the cloth, really the unifying theme of it is about purity and purification and basically how one, what is true purity and how does one go about uh, achieving that, attaining that. So in the Sutta, the Buddha gives these different similes which are about purification, cleaning cloth, purifying gold, and then even touching on yep, bathing. Um, so the Buddha starts off by giving this simile of the cloth and mm -hmm. saying how with just as a soiled, dirty cloth won't take dye very well, so too if one has um, inner defilements, they won't achieve a good rebirth necessarily. Mm -hmm. And if one has a, a clean cloth, then it will take dye well. Similarly, one who has purified their mind will be more likely to take a happy rebirth. Mm. Then he goes into defining what these blemishes or imperfections of the mind, the upakalesas are, and he lists 16 of them, which are all fascinating. We'll go a bit into that in, uh, in a bit. Uh, then he says that when one has abandoned these, one attains verified or confirmed confidence in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Mm. Um, somewhat uh, specific language hinting at stream entry, mm. but really um, the more one can abandon those hindrances, even if one doesn't attain stream entry, still you'll have more and more confidence in, yeah, in knowing in the teachings of the Buddha, the truth, and mm. in the idea and community of enlightened people. Then the Buddha says when one sees these as hindrances, one abandons them, then one can develop the... Um, naturally the well-being cascade mm. which we'll talk about a bit later but from having this uh, confidence in the buddha dhamma sangha uh, can lead to well-being and lead to joy lead to bodily tranquility happiness and concentration from that developing the four brahma viharas of loving kindness compassion empathetic joy equanimity and then he gives a rather succinct teaching there is this there's what's inferior what's superior and an escape from these then after giving that discourse, uh, he speaks to this wanderer of another sect who has a belief in purification through bathing. And the Buddha says, that's not the true inner bathing. True inner bathing purification comes about from cleansing the mind as he just taught. So hmm. it's good, good summary. Yeah, yeah. And Ajahn, what do you find interesting about this sutta? The mix of uh, narrative arc and the detailed list of the Upakalesa is interesting. And then just the similes, which you kind of drew out. Um, the simile of the cloth is especially, I mean, it's, it's such a powerful image. And what I find very interesting is mapping the image onto the sutta that follows. So the Buddha says, you know, one cleanses the cloth, the mind, and then dyes it, and it takes the dye well. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, cleansing the mind of the 16 Upakalesa, and then how this uh, recollection of the triple gem further instills joy. And then he stops and he says, when the mind, you know, basically pointing to the mind being purified, clean like cloth or uh, forged like pure gold. Um, and then he goes on to talk about developing the four Brahma Viharas of loving kindness, etc. And it's interesting because there's four colors of cloth that he talks, uh, four colors which he talks about dyeing the cloth in. So it's like really mapping on the cleansing of the cloth is abandoning the 16 and the water of that pomoja of joy um, with the triple gem cleansing the cloth. And then, and then what do you dye that cleansed mind with? You dye it in the colors of the, of loving kindness. And I mean, what a beautiful image. And it's a very unique, so often the path that the Buddha speaks about towards awakening is the jhanas. And here you have this totally very unique and beautiful route through abandoning defilement, uh, triple gem, and then the four Brahma Viharas, which is unique and wonderful and inspirational. So what highlights would you draw out from this sutta? Uh, well, one thing I found interesting was actually insights from the, the commentary. Um, so Buddha Gosa's commentary, he says or suggests one way in which these upakilesas, these hindrances, can be mapped onto these attainments of uh, stream entry, non-return, and arhantship. So suggests that the 
um, upakiles is number five through ten. Mm. So that's contempt, insolence, envy, avarice, deceit, and fraud. Those are abandoned at stream entry, so suggesting that they're variants of this personality view, sakaya ditti, suggests that at the attainment of non-return, one abandons the second, third, and fourth, and the sixteenth upakilesas, which are ill will, anger, resentments, and negligence. So that's based on, um, yeah, abandoning the uh, extensions of greed and anger. And then for arahantship, one abandons covetousness, the first upakilesa, then the 11th through 15th upakilesa. So that's obstinacy, rivalry, conceit, arrogance, and vanity. Hmm. So that's a cool mapping on. But then also that enigmatic statement where the Buddha says, there's this, there's the inferior, superior, and the, the escape from those. And uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi maps those onto the Four Noble Truths. There is this, there is dukkha. Hmm. Um, and it does map on to might be a perfect translation for when uh, Ajahn Sumedho says, mm. it's like this. And it really is a different, it simplifies things. It doesn't force the dukkha onto mm. you. It says, it's like this, and you can fill in, is there dukkha? What is here right now? Mm. There's what's inferior, that is ignorance and craving, all these upakilesas. There's what's superior, that's Nibbana, abandoning those. And there's a path, which is the Eightfold Path. So. Mm. I'd never... Uh... Yeah, kind of mapped on the those three to the four noble trees. That's a really fascinating uh, reframing. Mm. Do you want to draw anything out for? I think just the experiential um, kind of resonance of the sutta, where um, the qualities of you know how the Buddha points to when you abandon these defilements, how the recollection of the triple gem naturally emerges or the faith in the triple gem. And I just find it's, it's interestingly very immediately experientially true that when the heart is pure, there's this sympathetic resonance, like two strings tuned the same plucked and one resonates with the other is like the heart resonates with the Dhamma and the faith that emerges naturally from the pure heart is kind of immediate. And, um, yeah, just a beautiful thing to to know that it's like you're coming into tune with a greater song as you practice, and I do see that. And um, and then just to draw a resonance with the simile of the cloth, where when the mind is getting calm, say in the seventh or eighth step of the Anapanasati Sutta, where you're calming mental activity, there can be a moment where people feel like there's kind of a blankness in what you do. And to know that is the clean cloth, but that's when you can dye the cloth. And like if you drop into that calm mind, a thought of metta or love, um, the perception kind of pervades out uh, really powerfully. And that's often how you gladden the mind, how you dye it with these beautiful Brahma Viharas at that point in the meditation. So that instead of being left with just this blank, neutral calmness, you're brightening it at that moment by dyeing it. So it's not what the sutta is specifically speaking to, but it's an experiential kind of mapping on that I found in, in meditation a bit. Mm. And uh, what new pieces would you point to in the sutta, Ajahn? So this is the first time in the Majjhima, uh, coming from the beginning, when we get the iti piso stock phrase. So this is maybe the most well-known uh, Theravada mantra, where the Buddha talks about nine virtues of the Buddha, iti piso bhagava arahang sama sambuddho. Um, defines the six virtues of the Dhamma. So uh, it's well expounded, apparent here and now, etc. And defines the Sangha. And this is what we chant 108 times on the New Year's. And so first instance in the Majjhima, then the first instance of the Well-Being Cascade, of which there's a book. We've got every instance of that mapped out. It becomes quite common. And just an interesting vehicle for rather than pointing to how samadhi leads to happiness. Mm. This is how happiness leads to samadhi. Mm. And also the first instance of explaining a, a more full explanation of the four Brahma Viharas. So. That's great. And I know um, you've written a whole book or compiled a whole book on the Pamoja Cascade in here and pointing to Longpur Pasano's note that, you know, we think once our samadhi together, is together, we'll be happy. But often it's that once we're happy, our samadhi will come together. So yeah. all these different vehicles yeah. into well-being. So. Well, Ajahn, what's our word for the day? It is pamoja. 
So that means well-being, gladness, joy comes from the root mood, which means soft mm. or just happy. Well, thank you, Ajahn. And uh, we wish that for everyone during their week. And if you're joining us on Sunday evening, we'll see you on Zoom in about now. And otherwise, we'll see you next week for Majjhima Nikai 8. All right. Thanks, Ajahn.